All right. So I have a kind of a serious message today. Of course, all the messages are serious, but don't know how many shouts or hallelujahs I'm going to get. Didn't get too many last night and didn't get too many today. So judging on the hallelujah, amen scale, I'm probably going to get a flat zero again, but that's all right. We're going we're gonna to get into the word and, and with all kidding aside, um, I realize that sometimes messages are going deeper into people's lives and we become contemplative and that's what I'm hoping is going to happen today, that we're going to contemplate the material that I'm giving you. And today really is going to call more than a hallelujah. I would really rather you do some self-reflection. All right. So today is a day of self-reflection, looking at one's own heart and condition, because we're going to talk about a very important and very powerful, I believe, a subject today. And that's a subject of humility. All right. So, uh, Santa, you can put that up on the screen. And if you see the title is the blessing that comes with humility, because as I studied my Bible and looked through the word of God, I was just amazed at how many places God connects blessing with the word humility. So humility always comes before blessing in many, many ways, in many, many cases. Well, you know, you know, one verse you're all familiar, familiar with says, uh, God, uh, uh, ex, uh, God humbles, I mean, gives grace to the humble, but he, come on, help me. Resist. He resists the proud. That's the word I'm looking for. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. All right. So we understand that, right? Um, one verse in Luke's gospel, Jesus says it this way. He says, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So now that's a principle that we can carry through every aspect and every area of life. That doesn't only work in the church, that works in the world as well. It works in your uh, business or on your job or in your career or whatever you do. If you'll always take the humble place and the humble position, God will see to it that you be exalted and you be lifted high. Amen? All right. So I want to open up or have you open up with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And here lies a story about a young man by the name of Uzziah who became king uh, over Israel at the very young age of, he was 16, 16 years old. And it starts out as a really, really good story, but it ends up as a very, very sad story. And um, it really gives, I believe to me, and I hope to you, um, and I believe it will give it to you, just a word of caution in the way we are living and conducting our lives as it relates to humility, you see. Because as much as I would like to believe that, you know, every Christian I've ever encountered and will ever encounter really walks in great levels of humility, my experience over the years has proven me sorely wrong that there are a lot of believers who far, fall far short of living and exemplifying the life of humility. And yet the Bible teaches us, and we're going to see, because I'm going to give you a bunch of verses, that blessing is always connected with a life of humility. So the more humble you seek to be, the more God's going to bless you and lift you up. That's right. The more that you see really, and this is the principle you have to learn for a believer in, in, in Christian terms and for the believer, the way up is down. I don't push my way to the top. I work myself down to a lower position in humility and I allow God to do the lifting. Because we're going to see from the word that when God lifts you, nobody can push you down. Right. Right? So when God is involved in your life, and you, you keep in a very humble position and humble place with God in, in, in his presence. And not only with God, but with everybody else. Because sometimes people have this false sense of being humble before the Lord, but they cannot exhibit or they do not exhibit any humility among people, their brothers or sisters or just people in the world. Well, you can't say that you're humble before the face of God or in the presence of God and not have that humility spill over and out and touch others around you. Right. If humility is not in this earthly plane, then it most certainly is not in this heavenly plane, right? right? If, it's not, if it's not this way, it can't be this way because it all starts this way, between you and God. That's what I mean, right? Between you and God, right? And if it goes from you to God, then it's gonna spill out and it's gonna go this way to all the people around you. So one of the, one of the tests that I look for, and I can smell pride from a mile away, you know, and one of the things that I look for, you know, someone can proclaim to be humble or try to put on a humble air, but really the test is, 
are they exhibiting that humility among people that they're interacting with? Because that really is, that's where you're testing humility. That's where humility gets proven. It's how you're reacting and acting with people and in given circumstances and situations in life. So we can't just say, well, yeah, I'm humble before the Lord, but I'm prideful in every other aspect of life. It doesn't work that way, right? Whatever's going on in your heart is going to find itself outside and it's going to show itself in the actions and the activities of your life. So, so it's important for us to understand that it all starts with this humility before God and allowing God to really get to our heart and to deal with those issues of our heart. See, I told you I wasn't going to get too many amens this morning. That's okay. Allowing God to deal with the issues of our heart and to deal with that pride issue. Now, isn't it interesting that the word pride, P-R-I-D-E, I is right in the center of the word pride because I is always the center of a prideful person. It's always about me, my feelings, my desires, my wants, what I want to accomplish, I, I, I. It's always in the center of everything. You're the center of your own world, see? And that, that is a, that is, you know, that, that, that's the proof that there's pride operating in your life. You know, we don't care about anybody else, just about us and our family and our things, and we have no concern or compassion or love for anybody else. It's all about me, my life, myself, and I. And uh, that, that, is, that is pride. That's what pride is, all right? Pride seeks to always be recognized. Pride always seeks to be appreciated. Ooh, it's getting quiet here. Pride wants to be noticed, always. Pride always wants to feel like, you know, um, that you deserve a place of honor in whatever situation you're in, you see? I know like, um, and I don't mean this critically, it's just an observation, you know, when I go to conferences and everybody's scurrying to try to get the best seat in the house, you know, they all want to be up front and want to be recognized by the speaker or by the other ministers that are there. This goes on among adults in, in, in the body of Christ, you know, and, um, but you see, I take a different position. When I go to a conference, I don't want anybody to see me and I don't want to see anybody. I just want to kind of tiptoe in, sit in a corner somewhere, get ministered to and tiptoe out and be left alone. But I, I, I just, I can't, I, it just bothers me when I see people, you know, trying to kiss up to this one and kiss up to that one. It's all, it's all a pride thing going on, you see. It's all about who I know, what I do, my credentials. I don't care, you know, I don't have any credentials. I've got enough letters in my last name and my first name. I can't fit any more letters. It's already making all the all the computers in every department store and every website go boo, boo, boo. He, They can't even fit all the letters, so I don't have any room for any more letters. I don't need or want any letters. I just want to be plain old me, all right? But I think as we look to our lives, we've got to be very, very mindful that we are living a life of humility before God and before others in, in, around us, in our home and in our family and in our communities and at work because Blessing always follows a humble life, you see. And um, so I wanted to look at this story because I, I think this kind of nails it down. But let's go to Second Chronicles and let's look at verse, I'm sorry, chapter 26. And we'll start in verse 1. Now all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elah and restored it to Judah after the king rested with his fathers. And he was 16 years old, so right there, God is working in his life. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned 52 years. So God gave him longevity in this blessing that he put into his life. And it goes on to say verse 4, it says, And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. So he was walking in what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Now listen to verse 5, and these, verse 5 is where we want to kind of put some emphasis. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. Now listen, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. 
God just didn't prosper him. He made him prosper. So this we have a picture of a man who was totally humble and broken before God. I'm sure at the age of 16, stepping into this awesome responsibility of being king overwhelmed him. And the only thing he knew to do was what he had been brought up with. And that was to turn to God and to seek God say, and I've been there. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been there when I first got into ministry. And even to this day, um, there are things and situations that come my way that I don't know how to deal with. I have to get on my face and, and just cry out to God. I don't know how to do this. I would like for everyone to think that I know what I'm doing, but sometimes I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> And God, I really need your help in this matter or in this situation because the people are looking at me. They think I know what I'm doing and I want to make sure that we, what we do is right. So I need you, oh God. Broken, I can understand how Uzziah at a young age came to the Lord and was broken before him and totally humble because he had been given a task that was obviously much bigger than he was at 16 years old. You don't have the wisdom or the strength or the ability to lead a nation as king. But the Bible says that as long as he sought the Lord, as long as he put God first, as long as he made God the center of his attention. So we have a picture of a broken, I don't want to maybe use the word broken, but maybe a humble, contrite man whose heart was just open to God and to his leading and to his direction. So it says that as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. So God was working in his life, helping him to prosper because he was seeking the Lord with a humble heart. Amen. You see, there are a lot of people that I've encountered over the years, that they're self-made and it's evident because they give no glory to God. They do not confer with God. They don't look to the Lord. They don't look to the word. They look to themselves and their own abilities, you see. But this was a man who started out in the right condition, in the right place. He sought God. He was a humble man. Let's keep reading and let's see what God did in his life because I think it's so powerful. Now he went out and he made war against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabna and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities around Ashdod and among the... Whoa, 16 years old, God anoints him and he's already going out and doing supernatural stuff. It's amazing what God will do in your life when you humble yourself... <laughs> And, and, and declare your need of God and realize that you don't have all of the answers, that you're not the, the all in all, you're not the beginning and the end, but you come before God with a humble attitude, God, I don't know how to work this out, but you do, and you're going to show me. All of a sudden, he starts making all of these awesome things. He's breaking down walls, building up walls, and building up cities around them, and so on and so forth. And it says in verse 7 that God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians who lived in Ger Baal, and against the Mennonites. Also, the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. They brought tribute. Oh my gosh, and it goes to say his fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt because he became exceedingly strong. Now at this juncture, he's become exceedingly strong in the strength of God. Yes. At this juncture, he's, he's giving glory to God and God is continuing to give him all of this unbelievable breakthrough and prosperity and everything so far that he's laying his hands to is prospering and abounding and only good is happening to this man called Uzziah because he was strong in the Lord, which meant that he was humble and broken in the presence of God. He did not look to any of this at this point of his life as his doing. But let's keep reading. And verse nine says, and Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and the valley gate and the corner of the buttress of the wall, then he fortified them. He also built towers in the desert and dug many well wells, for he had much livestock. Wow, he had much livestock, which means he was a pro financially prosperous man. He was uh, both in the lowlands and in the plains. He also had farmers and he had farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved the soil. So he had a whole staff of farmers that tended to his farm into his land and to all the things that God is blessing him with. I want you to, I just want to take a break here for a minute and go back to verse five. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Well, it keeps on going. It says, moreover, Uzziah had an army. Wait a minute. He's got fields and he's built walls and he's done all of these things. He's got vines and 
and he's got vine dressers and he's got a whole staff of people that are over his enterprise and the work that he's doing. But it even went further than that. Let me tell you what, the depths and the levels that God will prosper you are innumerable. But it takes a humble heart to get there. Humility will always lead you right into the blessing of God. But pride will destroy you. Let's keep reading. Moreover, moreover, Uzziah had an army. Whoa, he had all of this and now he's got an army too. Of fighting men who went out to war by companies according to the numbers of their role presented. And we don't need to read all that, but let's go to verse 12. The total number of chief officers of the mighty men of valor was 2,600, just officers, 2,600. And under their authority was an army. Now, he not only had the army, but he also had an unbelievable ability to put everybody in organization, to organize this army. So he had leaders and he had those who were under the authority of those leaders. And the number of them were 307,500 that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. How many agree with me that God is working with this man? Now he's racking up victory after victory, conquest after conquest, blessing after blessing, walls and wells and all of these things, livestock, all of this is, is coming to him. And he is increasing in all of these things. Verse 14 says, Uzziah prepared for them the entire army, shields and spears and helmets and body armor, bows and slings to cast iron. And he made devices in Jerusalem invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame spread far and wide for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. Let me tell you what, this is a terrible story because up to the point before we read, he was marvelously helped. His strength was in God. This was a humble man who loved the Lord. But unfortunately, all of the things, all of the blessings that God was giving to him, he was no longer giving little by little because it starts, it's insidious, it starts, right? It starts with the littlest of things. Look at, look at, look what I just did. Wow. These people are speaking really highly of me. I must be something. I must be worth something. I, boy, I must be special. You see, little by little by little, he allowed that pride to get into his heart because that's how pride works. Pride just doesn't come and attack you overnight. Pride starts by the littlest of things and little by little by little by little by little by little by little, it enters your heart and it overtakes you. And that's exactly what was happening to Uzziah. With every conquest, he was still giving glory to God but he was also taking a little bit of glory for himself. With every conquest and every blessing that was coming into his life, he was setting a part of it up as a memorial to God and as a testimony unto what God has done, but a little bit of it he was setting up as a testimony to his own accomplishments and his own abilities. That's pride. Am I speaking to anybody here, you see? So little by little by little, pride entered the heart of Uzziah to the point that it said that he was marvelously helped until he became strong or he became proudful or prideful of what he has accomplished in his life. See, we got to be very, very careful, folks. You know, one of the things that I purpose to do in my life is every day give God the glory for everything that I am, everything that I have. I hold and take nothing to myself, but it is all the work of the Lord. This is God's doing, not man's doing. If there's any praise or glory to be done, let's bring the glory and the praise to King Jesus because it's him and him alone. Yes, we have to be willing vessels and we have to do our part and we do the work, but he gets the glory. There's nothing greater in my life than to do the work of the Lord and let Jesus get the glory for the work. Come on, are you with me? And that's the way we ought to be living our lives. I just have a, you know, I remember a story of a man that I knew some years ago who was really down and out and he was broken before the Lord and he was financially broken. His life was a mess and there were all kinds of stuff going on in his life. And he come to find the Lord and he gave his heart to Jesus and he started to follow the Lord with all of his heart. He had nothing. And it just reminds me when I read this story of Uzziah being a young man and coming before the Lord and seeking God and God beginning to prosper him. And this, this man, he started to see God because he couldn't figure it out. He didn't know what to do with his life. He, he didn't know how to get out of his financial 
uh, struggles. He didn't know how to get his life together. And he, he got on his knees and he cried out to God. And he just started, you know, living the word of God and doing the word of God. And uh, I can remember little by little by little, God was working in his life. Supernaturally, money was coming to him. I remember he told me a testimony one time that someone had owed him money from 10, 15 years uh, before this moment, before this story. And he said for 10 or 15 years, he never heard from the guy, never got a dollar from him. And he figured the money was gone. It was a pretty large amount. It was maybe $1,000, something like that. And he said one day in the midst of him seeking God and praying and having given his life to the Lord, he went to his mailbox and opened up the mailbox. And there was a note from this guy that owed him this money for over 15 years, money, cash in an envelope in there, just apologizing and repaying that money. And he had supernatural story after story of how God provided for him in a very, very hard and difficult time. Well, during that season, he started to go into some little business that he was working on. And he went into the business and in a matter of one year, that man went from making nothing to making over $125,000 in his first year of business. Now, the, the amazing thing is, is that, or the interesting thing, it's not amazing, it's kind of sad, but the interesting thing is when he was only making $100 or $200 a week, he was tithing on that money, yes. believing that God would bring him the return. But when the blessing started to roll in, all of a sudden the story changed because now you only have 200, you're going to give 20 to the Lord, but when you have 150,000, come on, how many of you can do the math? 15,000 belongs to God, something changed in his life. And he stopped tithing and he stopped going to church and he stopped serving the Lord. And the sad part of that story is that I watched from afar and I just saw that man slowly, slowly, slowly go backwards. He loved the Lord, there's no doubt about it. I believe, you know, he's not here anymore, he's in, in, in heaven. But I believe that, you know, he loved the Lord, but he didn't continue in, in seeking God. Yeah. And giving God the glory for all the things that he had been acquiring, all the things that had been, he had been blessed with. And you see, see, pride wants to come in and you can still love the Lord and have pride in your life. Just because you have pride doesn't mean you don't love the Lord. What it means is that I love the Lord, but I'm not totally sold on the idea that this is God working in my life. I'm not so totally sold on the idea that, you know, you know, this tithing thing is really bringing me this blessing in my life. Lord, I can trust you up to this point, but now that the blessing is here, this is kind of getting difficult to trust you because now you're talking big money. When you were talking 10 bucks, that was easy. I could swallow that. But when you start talking about thousands of dollars, you know, I mean, I worked for this. I labored for this. I, 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 I. And the big I which is stuck right in the middle of the word pride, begins to raise its ugly head. Yeah. And instead of continuing by giving God the glory for everything that you have and continue to seek the Lord with a humble heart and a sincere heart that God, thank you. Every day I wake up with a heart of thanksgiving to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done in my life. I take no credit to myself. I understand that this is your work. I wouldn't dare to take a second of the credit to myself. Because that would be a foolish and a stupid thing. Well, first of all, I'm smart enough to know that I'm not smart enough to have been able to bring this place to the point it is. This had to be the work of God. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. I'm not charismatic enough. This has got to be the hand of God. Trust me. This, I didn't know what I was doing in those beginning years. I know a little bit more now, but still there are some times I don't know exactly what to do. It's God and God alone that has brought me through all of these years to this place and has prospered and blessed and increased this ministry. But you got to be careful. You see, he was marvelously helped. God did marvelous things. Look at all that God did. Look at all the things that, that he had accomplished in his life until he became strong in himself. Probably looked at himself. Look, look, look what I did. Look what I've accomplished. Look, look at what the work of my hands have, have done. I must be awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm an awesome person. Look at, look, at, look at this. Instead of giving the glory to God, he started to take the glory for himself. And when you take the glory for yourself, you're in trouble with God. 
God will help you as long as you stay humble in the presence of the Lord. But the middle, in the, in the, in the, in the midst of rising up or at the, if you rise up and you start to take the credit for yourself, then you're going to see the hand of God turn and things will not go as easy and as well as you had planned or hoped or even as God had intended for your life. That's why we've got to address the issue of pride. We've got to talk about humility and the responsibility that you and I as believers have in walking before the Lord with true humility. I don't know about you, but I give God the glory for everything. Whenever I get a blessing, I say, thank you, Lord. Whenever I get an increase, whenever I get a good report, whenever I get whatever, I just say, thank you, Jesus. I don't care where I am, with whom I'm, I just say, thank you, Jesus. This is your work in my life and I give you the glory, you see. And one of the hardest things to get rid of in a man's life is pride. Because for many of us, it becomes a defense mechanism. It becomes something that we use to buttress our sagging, low opinion of ourselves, which is all a device of the enemy. Because the Bible says you should not think more highly, more highly, more highly of yourself than you ought. Which means that we should think highly of ourselves because we are God's creation and possession. But we should not think more highly of ourselves to where we get into pride and we take the credit for what for the things that God is really doing in our lives. So be very careful in your life that you're not taking credit for what God is doing. See, I don't have a problem tithing because I realize that every dollar I have has been given to me by the hand of God. So for me, whether, you know, it was back in those days when I was tithing, you know, under hundred, hundreds of dollars, less than hundreds, because I didn't have anything, to hundreds, to, to thousands, now to several thousands, it, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, a hundred thousand, it, 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 it's a way of me saying to God over and over again, I realize that this is your hand in my life. Just because, you see, God will never bless you with more if you can't be faithful with the little. That's the principle. It's not going to give you more blessing if you can't handle and honor him with the blessing you have right now. Amen. So this is what happened to Uzziah. So let me read this again. For he was marvelously helped till he became strong. But when he was strong or in pride, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. And then it begins to tell you what caused his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now we're going to learn here in a minute that that was not his place. He was king. He was not a priest. Only the priests at that time were allowed to burn at the altar, incense at the altar of the Lord. That was, that was reserved for the priests. He wasn't a priest. He was a king. But this is what happens when a person gets into pride. Because you think you're something that you're not. That was a good place for somebody to say amen. This is what happens when pride gets into man's heart. You begin to think you're something that you're not. He's beginning to think that he's, he can do what the priests do because well, I'm, I'm Uzziah. Look at what I did. I built wells and built walls and have a huge farm and all kinds of people that work for me and they honor me and they bow down to me. How dare you tell me I can't do, I can do whatever I want to do. I'm a self-made man, dear Jesus. So when pride comes, we're convinced that we're called to do things that we're not even called to do. We're convinced we should be doing things that we're not really anointed for or fitted for. We're convinced that we can do those things because pride gets in man's heart and convinces you that this is right. So he went into the temple to burn incense at the altar of incense. So Azariah, the priest, went in after him and with him were 80 priests of the Lord. 81 people tried to stop him from this transgression. Stop him from his prideful, selfish, self-centered act which was about to bring his destruction upon him. But you see, this, this will tell you, tell you, this was his response. 
it says that he were 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men, and they withstood King Uzziah, and they said to him, is it not for you, Uzziah, to burn, or it is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Now get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord your God. So 81 priests, men of God, men of God, preachers we'll call them, pastors we can, we can label them, are trying to convince this one man that he's stepping out of his anointing and he's about to bring on the destruction upon his life because he's out of God's will and out of God's purpose and out of order. And yet 81 people could not convince this man to change his mind and to turn away. You know what that tells me about pride? Pride makes you totally unreachable. Nobody can reach you because you already made up in your mind that you are right and the whole world is wrong. Just shout amen. Nobody will know I'm talking about you. And this was Uzziah's response to the 81 priests coming after him and trying to convince him to turn from his evil practice and his evil ways and stepping out of the plan of God and the anointing of God and the blessing of the Lord. Up to this point, this man was walking in the blessings of God, but pride got in his heart and was about to destroy the blessings that God had intended for him. This is verse 19. Then Uzziah became furious. That was his response to 81 men of God trying to convince him that he is making a mistake. Uzziah turns and is furious. And boy, let me tell you what, I've met many, many people in my life who are so filled with pride that they are right and the whole world is wrong and you're not going to convince them because they're convinced that they're correct. They're convinced. You know, it's interesting to me how when someone's going to do something that affects a whole lot of people, how they're the only one that hears from God. Let that sink in for a minute. It's amazing to me how when one person's actions can affect so many people, but they're the only one that heard from God and they will fight you tooth and nail, just like Uzziah fought tooth and nail and became furious. How dare you come against me? How dare you tell me that I'm wrong? 81 sensible men of God could not convince this one foolish man who allowed pride to get into his heart and the results were devastating. Uzziah became fur, uh, furious and he had the censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry with the priest, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord beside the incense, of altar, uh, the incense altar. Now, the sad part of the story is that this man never got rid of his leprosy and was a leper for the rest of his life in total and absolute isolation. So everything that he had acquired was basically useless to him because he couldn't get well. And he remained a sick man and an isolated lonely man all the days of his life because he was marvelously helped until he became strong or prideful and took credit for the things that God was doing in his life. Am I speaking to anybody here today? Amen. Humility... Humility will always bring forth blessing in your life, but pride will always destroy you. I've watched so many people in my years, precious people who I loved, who would not listen to the word of, of advice and warning, not only from me, but from other reliable men and women of God, and went out and did things in violation, I believe, of the plan and the purpose and the will of God, and ended up in a disaster. And all because of pride, because they just wouldn't humble their heart before God and say, well, you know what? These people don't mean my harm. Let me, let me, let me just, let me listen to what they're saying. Let me take a moment and try, try to just think this through a little bit better and, and wait. Sometimes waiting is the most prudent thing that a person can do is just put things on hold until you and those who you are, that you are submitting to also have that clear go ahead within, within their spirit. You know, the Bible says, right, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety, there's wisdom, right? And, and, but you see, pride casts off all restraint 
all authority. And just like Uzziah, 80, it's amazing, 81 men of God, 81 proven men of God could not convince him that he was making a mistake. That's how serious pride and the issue of pride can work in a person's life, just like it worked in Uzziah's life. Now, so we looked at a story that I considered to be a very sad story. And I don't have a lot of time. I used up all my time here, but you got a few more minutes. I'll go real fast. Are you okay? Because I want to, I want to just give you, I want to give you some of the positive side of this. And just to show you, I've got 10 verses here that are going to highlight 10 points about what humility will do for you. All right. Um, how humility brings blessing into your life. So I'll go through them quickly. And um, these are not exhaustive, by the way. The Bible has so much to say about humility and what humility will do. And I just, I just highlighted these particular verses because I thought that these were very appropriate. But listen to what humility will bring you. 2 Samuel 22 and verse 28. And it says, you, Lord, meaning God, you will save the humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty that you may bring them down. Man, I don't want God's eyes on me to bring me down. Pride will bring you down. Humility will cause God's saving power to work in your life. So what does the word save mean? Let's go to the Hebrew dictionary and let's pick up the word save. Let's go to the Hebrew dictionary for the word save. And it means this. It means to avenge, to defend, to deliver, to preserve, to rescue, to get the victory or to give you the victory. So when the, when the word says in this one little verse right here where it says, you, Lord, will save the humble people, what God is saying to us is he's going to avenge you. He's going to defend you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to help you. He's going to preserve you. He will rescue you and help you to get the victory in every one of your warfares because you have humbled your heart before God and before man. Here's another one. Psalm 149, 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. There's the word again. Different form of the word save. But it's the word salvation and it has a very similar meaning. He's going to beautify the who? The humble. Everybody say humble. humble. The humble with salvation. So this is what the word salvation means. It means deliverance. It means help. It means victory. It means prosperity. And it means to rescue from distress or danger. That's what the word salvation means. Who's going to get that kind of blessing in their life? The humble the humble. Now, let me just stop at this. Just be, when we talk about being humble, we're not talking about being stupid because we're called, we're told in the word to be as wise as a serpent, but as gentle and as humble as a dove. So don't take me for stupid. I may be humble, but I am not dumb. What what proves my humility is when you do take me for stupid and you do things because you think I'm stupid, what proves my humility is the way that I react to you. That's what proves my humility. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Just saying. Just wanted to get that out there. All right. Uh, Psalm 9 and verse 12. He does not forget the cry of the humble. You ought to write these down, I'm telling you. And as you're seeking, you know, and growing in God, you've got these verses and you say, Lord, you know, you know, your heart is right before God. You say, Lord, you know, I'm a humble person. I'm trying to do my best. And, and this is what your word declares. You will hear, he will hear your cry. He does not forget the cry of the humble. He'll hear the cry for help that you bring or you give out. Here's one, and this is from the English Standard Version. This is uh, Psalm 25, 9. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. So the promise that we have for humility in our lives is that he will guide and teach you. I don't know about you, but I need God to teach me. 
I need God to lead me and to guide me if I'm going to get to my destination or wherever it is that I want to get to. We all have dreams and desires and aspirations and work we want to do for God and things we want to do for ourselves. I don't always know how to get there. But according to the word of God, if I will just humbly walk with God and walk with people, and that doesn't mean being stupid. It doesn't mean being sissified. It doesn't mean any of that. It means I have a strong a confident but humble heart before God. I realize from where my blessing comes. I realize from where my strength comes. I realize from where my power comes. I realize that without God, I am nothing. But with God, I have the possibility of being and doing all things. Come on, are you with me? He will guide and teach you because you walk humbly before him. Here's one. Psalm 147.6, the Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Man, you ought to write this one down. Let me tell you what, you may be in business, you may be in a profession, you may, and you're trying to get up the corporate ladder and every time you get up, someone kicks you down. Let me tell you what, you just let them kick you down because the Bible says that the Lord lifts up the humble. The Lord lifts up the humble. The Lord lifts up the humble. Let me tell you what, when God does the lifting, no man can put you down. When God does the lifting, no man can keep you down. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what your background is. It doesn't matter when God lifts you up. Humans have absolutely nothing to hold you down. They cannot do a thing to keep you from progressing and prospering and abounding because God lifts you up. But God lifts up the humble. That means when people start coming against you, you don't have to act like them. You act like the Bible. You act like what the Word says. When they persecute you, you bless them. You pray for them. You, you, heap, them, you heap blessings on them. You say, go ahead, persecute me. I'm just going to pray for you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to keep on loving you. And man, I'm telling you what. The Bible says that God will lift up the humble. And listen, in, in, in the course of my life and ministry, there have been many people who didn't have my best interest at heart that tried to, you know, destroy me. And you know what? The interesting thing about it is that in their efforts to stop me, I only grew more, more blessed than ever, that God did his work in spite of them. And that they had absolutely zero effect on my life. The whole key to it was remaining humble in the presence of God. Saying, God, they're persecuting me. And I don't even know why. But I purpose not to retaliate, but to just pray for them and bless them from afar. And Father, I just stay in your presence because you are the best vindicator that the world has ever come to know. That you can vindicate me. I love it. He will lift you up. He will lift you up. Let me tell you about along the way, people are going to kick you down. But it doesn't matter. Let them kick you because they're kicking you. As long, it's your response to their kick that's going to make the difference. When they start kicking, don't kick back. Say, go ahead, kick me with all you got. You want to slap me? Go ahead, I'll give you another cheek. Because get ready, get ready, get ready because God is coming to my defense. God's hand is going to take me and pluck me and lift me to the top. This battle is the Lord's. Come on, are you with me? The Lord will lift you up. All right. Here's one. You want, you want to hear a few more? Got a few minutes? All right. Proverbs 3.34. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. Now, I love this word grace because the word grace here means kindness and favor. You walk humbly before God you're going to have the kindness and the favor of God upon your life. Yeah. In other words, God will touch hearts. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he turns it whichever way he wishes. In other words, you know, people are going to be turned towards you. Others are going to get a pink slip. You're getting a raise. Others are getting a boot out the door, but you're getting a promotion. Because you've humbled yourself in the presence of God. And you see, that's why I say you can't say you're humble before God. And then you're the most arrogant, prideful, snot-nosed, smart mouth person at work. 
and you wonder why you can't get ahead because, man, you got to change your attitude and change your heart and humble yourself in the midst of a bad situation. Well, you don't know how bad it is. Humble yourself that in due season he may lift you up. God will always lift you up. Kindness and favor of God will be upon your life. And let me tell you what, it's just like what we talked about, God lifting you up. When God's favor is on your life, let me tell you what, nobody can stand in your way. They can talk about you. They can assault you. They can make up lies about you. They can do whatever trying to stop you. The devil himself can't stop you because God's favor is upon your life. Thank you for that one dozen hand claps. The rest of you, I don't know where you are. Give God the glory. God's favor upon your life. All right. Here's one, Proverbs 11, 2. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Simple, man. That's not a, that's not a hard verse to understand. Because when you're humble, you're teachable. When you're humble, you're cautious. When you're humble, you don't just do things impetuously. You, you, you consider, you pray, you seek God, you seek advice, and you end up making really good decisions. Most of the time, we're seeking God for wisdom for the mistakes we've made. But you see, if we would flip that and just you know, humble ourselves before the Lord and Listen sometimes to the wisdom of godly people. Sometimes even just older people in general who have been through some stuff and done some things. I know when you're younger, I was, you know, you think you know everything, but you find out real fast that you don't. And if I could impart any wisdom to a younger person is learn lessons from older people. They're not throwaways. They have a wealth of wisdom that they can share with you and help you to make shortcuts. But you see, when you have a prideful heart, you think you know the answers to everything. But with humility comes great wisdom and God will just lavish you with the wisdom from above when you come humbly. Come on, glory to God. All right, let me get, I'm almost there. Are you all right? I'm almost there. Okay, Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride brings him low but a humble spirit will retain honor. God will give you honor. See, you don't have to seek honor, crave honor, expect people to give you honor. Everybody wants to be honored, you know, in some way. You say, oh, no, no, it's not. No, when you want, you, you think you deserve some level of respect or some level of appreciation or some level, you're trying to seek your own honor, but the Bible says, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Honor will just come to you. You're not going to have to keep it. You're not going to hold on to it. It's just going to, it's going to be there. It's always going to be there because you're walking humbly. All right. Here's one. Isaiah 29, 19. The humble also shall increase their joy in the Lord. Humility will bring you great joy because you don't have a life of pride and Life of trying to boast. And did you ever get around boastful people? They boast about this and boast about that. I Man, I could smell a mile away. I remember some years ago, I had a young guy many, many years ago come to the church. And I didn't want to get too close to him because he just seemed very arrogant to me. You know, it's just like an arrogant air. And sure enough, one day he comes to my office and he's got a manila envelope and he pulls out, you know, these typed pages and he puts it on my desk. And I said, okay, what's this? Here? This is my resume. I, I didn't know I was looking for an employee. <laughs> well, no, no, I just want you to know who I am and what I've done and where I come from, you know, and accomplish. I'm thinking, well, you know, I kind of read through it and it was a bunch of baloney. You know how people take baloney and try to wrap it in a real fancy bread and put some fancy <laughs> condiments on it and try to sell it as something else? Bologna is bologna. Bologna always smells like bologna. And I smelled bologna from a mile away. It was like I wanted to just take my, my pencil and write bologna right on the whole thing and hand it back to him. It's like, what are you kidding me? You have to come in, you know, grant, this is my resume. I, I, I don't need to know. Why don't you just humble yourself? Why don't you get to work in the kingdom? Why don't you let God bring honor to your life? 
Why, why do you have to come and let everybody know you graduated this and you graduated that and you got this letter? And that, who, I don't really care. That never impressed me in my, I don't care how many letters you have after your life. What, I, what I'm looking for is a life that's living for Jesus, a life of quality, which is far more than letters before and after your name. It's a life that's lived for Jesus Christ. It's a life that emulates the gospel and has the power of the word working in it. It's not about the letters. Now, I'm not discounting or discrediting the hard work that people put in to accomplishing and you make great accomplishments. All I'm saying is keep God in the factor. Give God the glory for every one of those letters before and after your name. True joy is when you just live humbly and simply in the presence of God. That, that's the true joy. All right, two more and then I'll be done. Isaiah 57, 15, for thus says the Lord, or the high and lofty one, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. And he says, I dwell in a high and holy place. With him dwells with those who have a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And of course, I always like to go to words. What does the word revive mean? To give life, to nourish up, preserve, recover, repair, and restore. Wow, that's what God does for the humble in heart. Last one and we're done. Proverbs 22, 4. For the reward, now this is the English Standard Version. The reward for humility, wow. The reward for humility. Humility has a reward attached to it. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. True life. The way God intends us to live life. True or humility, the reward for Humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Amen. Dear God, Amen. it pays to be a humble person. Amen. It pays to think a little less of yourself and think a little bit more of others and consider a little bit less of yourself and to consider a little bit more of who God is yeah. and what God is doing in your life and what God is wanting to do in your life. And it's time for us to kind of step aside and get off the throne and let God sit on the throne of our lives and our heart and let him be the king and the ruler of our lives, giving him the glory because we know that it is in him that we live, we move and have our being. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap, a shout, an amen.